All right, so 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 we we've, we've just built uh, an Azorius control deck. Get me out of here. Um, and let me get let me give the gist of what we're trying to do with this Azorius control deck. So here's here's the idea. We are going to try to leverage the two mana slot with a lot of foretell cards because two is an, an extremely essential mana cost for a ton of control decks. Like if you have a lot of two mana things. It, like the ability for you to do two things in one turn, it, like right around turn four, five, six, seven, you desperately want to be able to counter two things a turn because that's when a lot of your enemies will start being able to do two things a turn. Uh, it's very difficult for a deck to do two things a turn on two, turn two or three, as in like an enemy deck will struggle to do two things on turn three unless they're stupidly aggro. Uh, but if they're stupidly aggro, again, that's why we want a lot of two mana stuff to be able to counter those in the early turns. So, so two mana is really, really, really essential for a lot of control magic. So Disdainful Stroke, Essence Scatter, and Negates. Just a nice little spread of versatility here. But we have this new Foretell card, Saw It Coming, the ability to, later on, counter something for two. We also have our card draw spell, Behold the Multiverse, Scry two, then draw two. And, I, and again, this sort of stacks up on the two mana slot. So um, what is the rest of the deck going to look like, given that we have some counter magic and draw? Well, um, some of the finishing type bits... Uh, or uh, let me I'm gonna put this I'm gonna ignore this stuff for a little bit. Some of the finishing type bits is Shark Typhoons, Nice Cycle, always able to be hard cast. That's fine. A single Dream Trawler. I'm gonna try out Starnheim Unleashed on turn four in a pinch. You can just cast this and make a you know four four White Angel Warrior token with Vigilance. That's perfectly good against uh, some aggro decks. But obviously later on, what we'll want to do is foretell this to summon a shitload of angels with our two mana counter spells up close out the game and uh, dream trawler is probably a better choice but i think i think this card's fun <laughs> uh, now some of the other uh control pieces against aggro deck doom scar we can foretell this and do a very early sweeper against uh, a, a tricky aggro deck and sigrid god favored i've found to just be incredible i think this card is amazing it's like an instant speed skyclave apparition this is particularly nice if, say, our opponent summons a pesky planeswalker that I don't really know how to deal with. End of turn, I can flash in and just start attacking. Also, we can exile one attacking or blocking creature until Sigrid leaves the battlefield. So it's a little bit like a Skyclave Apparition, um, except it's able to be cast at flash speed. So I can do things like leave Sigrid up and then cast Behold the Multiverse if our opponent doesn't swing. Um... I think Nico Aris is really, really good because they can do the minus one deal two damage when we've gotten to draw. So on turn five, I could say do something like summon Nico Aris, play Behold the Multiverse to draw two, and then minus one to deal six damage. That's actually a lot. And the rest of what Nico Aris does is just draws a crap load. This up to one target creature you control can't be blocked this turn. Whenever that creature deals damage to a player, return it to its owner's hand. Could be a weird way to get Sigrid off the battlefield. I don't know, but uh, it doesn't really matter to me. I'm also trying to run Nico Defies Destiny to be able to... I don't know. Maybe gain some life, do some stuff, and maybe it'll be good. Gain life, add mana to cast Fortel, return a Fortel card from your graveyard to your hand. Seems to have a little bit of value, but seems also very, very slow. This almost seems like a turn 4 or 5 play. As for the lands, um, I'm running some Jewari Disruptions, but I want to be careful not to run too many. Uh, and then we're running a pair of Amerias, a pair of Seagate Restorations, a single Ondu Inversion, and then uh, everything else is just like what you would expect. Lots of uh, Temples of Enlightenment, Hengate, Hengate Pathways, and Mistgate Pathways, you know. Uh, the one thing that's kind of interesting is this Gates of Istfel that I can sack to gain life and draw a card. Single Vantress, single Castle Arden Vale. Could be the case. Could be the case that we want more Vantresses or we want more Arden Vales or something like this. Mildly, huh. mildly maniacal says, love you, Day9. Well, thanks, mildly maniacal. By the way, 27 lands total, including our modal dual face Landos. Or as I like to call them, spell lands. All 
All right, it's the world tree. Is this my deck? Is Jub Jub Bird doing my deck? Well, it means says, do you always just delete the older decks? Yeah. Absolutely. Hmm. This is a situation where I want to just wait. Right? Soon Autumn says, hey, Dan, I have some math on the last deck. Can I send it to you somehow? Well, tell me a little bit about it. Tell me a little bit about it. Would really love is some counter spells and shark typhoons. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I I think we're up against our own deck. This is this is amazing. I love to see this. Sicrid is an incredible bomb. Yeah, we're up against our own deck. This is this is astounding. This is so good. This is a tapped creature, huh? So if this attacks, we're going to Sicrid and delete it. Boysmith says, real question, do we counter the combo or we will it, let it happen? We counter the combo. Uh, because if we let it happen, we run the risk of a um, uncounterable spell, like a coma getting onto the stack. This is, this is, dude, this is our deck. Yeah, I mean, I'm just... We're, we're gonna play this out very, 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 very slowly. No, we're not. We're just gonna punch him in his teeth. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I start the trend and then I build the counter deck for it. <laughs> you love to see it. We're gonna have to crack this for blue right away. <whistles> Russian Alley says, I'm hearing some kitties in the background. Not having a stroke, right? <laughs> you are not, and that's part of the game board. Which has been an absolute joy watching MTG today, but the work day is over. Now I'm going to go play video games. LOL. Man, have a great, great, great night, man. Happy weekend. Um, Lightcraft says, ooh, this new map is really pretty. I think it's pretty, but I, I think that... I they actually may have even toned down on the color, but I mean, I think that it's way, way, way too visually busy. What's going on with Jay? Jay Ryle, ten twenty-four. 
Yeah, I think I think the the it, it's it's too busy, and and the way I'll describe it is like, it's beautiful, absolutely. But when you start having a lot of effects on the screen, it's just like it it, it it's visually tiring to watch. Was my experience of it. This is just a land, right? Okay. Well, my thing is, I think they could have dulled it a bit by making the pattern under the ice. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the, the way I would say it, Almighty Thunder, is I am not a graphic designer. We had, we had a lot of visual design courses in grad school. A good amount of visual design courses, but, like, it was always about, um in relation to film or in relation to um, uh, interactive media like games and stuff so in a lot of those scenarios so much of the focus was on not just the pure visual readability like you would with a design professional and so I, I am pretty weak at knowing what the solution technique would be but I'm I do trust my statements when I'm like, it's very visually busy. Because when you have these sorts of like, th these are the elements that you want the eye to be drawn to. Like this and this. Right? And there is there is some contrast between the background and the foreground, but it doesn't feel controlled. Anymore. I'm just gonna do this. There's, there's nothing that an Azorius deck could cast on turn 3 that would freak me out. Does Fortell a sorcery speed thing? Nope, it's just your turn, buddy Tonto. Alright, let, let's do some things at flash speed, shall we? Seagate Reborn, okay. Says this pattern also reminds me of the snow elf lady's ears, weird braided ears. Yeah, yeah. It does kind of have that interesting, swirly, Celtic, uh, you know, inspired kind of pattern. Or, I don't know if it's Celtic. It's like uh, Nordic. So, somewhere way up in, it's like like a, a generally north end of European look. I think it's Nordic. Yeah. Yeah, like, the in terms of the flavor, it's very flavorful. Like, I think this is really well aligned with, like, I mean, just looking at the art on, say, this card and looking at the board, it's just, like, it all resonates. You know, the sort of purpley, greenish blues. It's obviously more accentuated green here, more accentuated purple and blue here. But, like, fuck, it's, like, really, 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 really nice. I think I can fit one of those in my deck. It's really nice. However, I still... Uh, would claim that my issue is not with the beauty of the artistry because it's beautiful. It's incredibly beautiful. It's just with the visual readability. It seems very loud. I think I actually should have. No, I actually didn't have a behold multiverse. Okay. Cigarette actually deals with this really well. Am I cool with a bunch of little one ones? Yeah, I think so. I just leave my shark back. Sue Nottam says, I feel bad spamming the chat, but you asked, running 11 or 12 of the things we counter, you 60% get their odds, instead of 60%. But it would need to be a one drop.
How, how are you getting that math? Can you, you explain? Because you, you give the output, but that sounds wrong. That sounds wrong, because if we had... Because we, we, we have seven bad cards in the deck once we self-counter with Tybalt's Trickery. So what are you cutting to put those in? So that, that's what I'll first ask. Assume not, I'm telling me what you cut to put it in. It says, if Sigurd, if you Sigurd the Crawling Barons and Sigurd dies, does the Barons lose all scouts? Yeah. We're loading up the tank. We have a Sicred that we're not going to cast. We're trying to avoid some significant spell on turn 5, which I think we'll wind up passing through. Maybe cut land or cut Ugins. So if you cut the Ugins, you would go from 26 good cards down to 22 good cards and you'd be going from seven um, bad targets up to 11 bad targets so suddenly you're doing 11 out of 33 which is a 66 percent hit chance compared to um, what was in my deck which was an 80 percent hit chance so I think so I think that for that reason I'd be leery of says, I'm just multiplying the odds of drawing one of the count. What, what are you multiplying? The, the get there odds, I don't think swap by 1%. So here, send me a message on Discord. Send me a message on Discord. I think there's, there's something that sounds very off. Because it shouldn't be a change of about 1%. It should be a change by about 15 to 20%. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Is there any way to see the, 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 the foretold cards live? Yeah, I'm sorry. It's... I apologize. It's, it's two saw it comings. I'd like to... Well... No, I just want Lance. And I, in particular, I want blue Lance. Murray says, I'm playing Rakdos Discard, and it's pretty good. I like Rakdos Discard. I, I like the Rakdos Discard a lot. Okay, this is fine. Welcome to the party. So you need to be able to cast the Doomcrawler and have, like, quite a bit of protection up. And this is why we're running one. Because, I mean, it feels really thin, you know? we do with Crawling Barons? Yeah, we have Sigrid. Super, 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 super strong. Although, part of me thinks that a, um, what the heck would it be called? Part of me thinks that a Field of Ruin might be better in the Azorius decks. Part of me thinks this. Because, you know, there's a lot of World Tree shenanigan bullshit. Love coffee. Every 
deck is also running the 4-3 snowman land. <laughs> I like that you call it a snowman land. That's a good name for it. That's a really good name for I love that. So my opponent is low on lands, which I think means that I just need to drown my opponent in card draw and lands myself. So I think end of turn, smashing the gates of Istfel open. I mean, it obviously loses us land, but I think that gaining a little life, drawing a little land seems good. And I'm trying to bait um, with Sikrid. Here comes the pump. I'm trying to bait with Sikrid a little bit because I would love, 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 love Excuse me. For this giant killer to come down. Because then I want a Nico Aris. Shoot for one. Now, if you were watching for the meme bullshit, isn't this a different... <laughs> just a different speed? Yeah, no, I'm thinking a little bit about what's the right thing to do here in this situation. X, Y, Z. And we'll try to think about it, you know. Oh, here's some considerations to make. We're worried about this. We're worried about that. We could go this way. It could go that way. Who knows? <laughs> Applin. <laughs> and people are like, I want to see dumb shit. Oh. It's all fine by me. Super fine by me. Would love, love, love a swing in. Eat this, kill that. <laughs> Doomscar might actually just be nice to just fucking hard cast. Tails end picks it off, and I'm like, oh! Super perfect. He's on the charred creature. This is probably just going to be for the scry. It doesn't make any sense to me to not have it be the scry. There's a zero percent chance Tibble's Trickery is a good deck in a best of three. Could be true. There was a suggestion, which is you just run a mass shrine deck. <laughs> you just run a fuckload of shrines and you swap out all the combo pieces and replace it with shrines. And I was like, whoa, that's some fucking, that's some next level shit. All right, one, two, three. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do Scar. I mean, this should just resolve. I don't know. I don't know how, how the deck would be in a best of three. It's again, it's a different muscle. Like what I did was probabilistic playtime day nine, right? That's that's what I did for a little bit. I probably want to keep the Amaria's call. It seems like a perfectly acceptable thing to cast. I mean, it, do, it does look like we win, you know. How do shrines work at all? I don't understand. You just... You just... Gain extra mana for the number of shrines you have. You use the other shrine that, that pings and... <laughs> deals damage. Based upon how many shrines you have. You just fucking... It's shrines, right? And that is bizarre and actually kind of makes sense. Now, in best of three, you actually probably just wouldn't have a sideboard. <laughs> you would. <laughs> you would just be like, no, no, the combo, it's good enough, yeah. Blockbuster's in the 
Tybalt deck, I don't get it. I'm not that level of magic player. Yeah, so here's... So what I'm doing is I'm combining a very zany thought with an already very zany deck. Functions as follows. So the idea is... Okay. <laughs> the idea is... Uh, some people have built decks where... Um, let me let me give a really good example. If you have a deck that's say eight really good creatures, and then a bunch of fucking planeswalkers. All right, maybe that maybe that's your setup. What you could do in your sideboard is. What your opponent might see. I don't observe unjust rules. Gotta be a little bit careful about this crawling balance, but I think it should be fine. Breath, I got this. Breath, I got this. What you might do is you might say, man, my opponent is probably anticipating that what I'm gonna do is support my creatures, but I'm going to remove all eight creatures and replace them with more Planeswalkers. So you can do these really stupid sideboarding things where your main deck is maybe a bunch of creatures. Like I've, I've even seen people have like 12 really good creatures as their main deck, and then 12 Planeswalkers in their sideboard. So their opponent boards in a whole bunch of... a whole bunch of stuff, and then you just... And then, oh shit, you just, I don't know, bop out a bunch of, a bunch of the good stuff. Oh, a bunch of planeswalkers. Oh my god, is it, is it my little family? Oh, CC, it's so good to see you. By the way, this, this is terrific, because once this attacks, there's not enough mana for counter spells. This is, I think, the big discovery that I think is making Azorius Control really good, is this one. Peregrine actually hits the nail on the head. Transformative sideboards are super cool and rarely work. Alright, go cast holes. Show me what you got. I mean, this actually seems too pricey. I don't even think we need this. We, I mean, we could just draw so many cards with Nico Aris. Get out of here. We, we just dish a dream trawler, I think. Restocked and ready to go. I generally don't want the white mana here. Just foretell this. I mean, this is this is some pretty standard just Azorius beatdowns, you know what I mean? Pretty standard. Trawler might be better in sideboard. Yeah, McGinnisburg, I think you're right. How will that come back as a land or as a zero zero creature? It, it comes back as its default cardliness. <laughs> Pretty clean and easy win. Nico Iris is so good. Ooh, look at this full art, man. I've not seen the full art of this. Get out of here. Alright. Alright. J Ryle 1025. I think I think we've done it. Okay, so we're going to just 
saw it coming this. I just think that, like... As a generic example, this is maybe me beating a dead horse. But I talked about, like, two mana spells really being just... Ooh, yeah. And it might be easy to say, Ooh, I should be running more Dream Trawlers in here. But I think that... Is this theirs? Why is it just a great example of, like... Because I had more cheap stuff. I have already won. What am I doing? I should just be flying here. Uh, Nico didn't seem to have done very much in this game, though. Oh, I feel like they did great shit for us. I mean, we they created just um, dangling card draw opportunities. And also, Nico Aris strikes me as a turn 3 Planeswalker versus Aggro, and like a turn 8 Planeswalker versus Control. Opponent goes first, okay. The Bosch the Prey Piercer. This is a nice one to have. Gween. I muted the wrong thing. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> I wanted to mute the crunchy, crunchy, crunchy. Okay, so oh, boss, you bastards. I mean, this this seems really good. This reflects on your actions. The thing that I'm really looking for, that I'm really looking for, is the turn, turn seven, mega stuff. Nico defies destiny. Like I, I just see it, and I'm like, mm -mm, no, no, no. I think we gotta cut that one. Cut that one a lot. Blue, 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 red, red. Green, green. I think Sacred God Favorite's pretty good. Oh, Darren says I had to step away for a while. How's this one doing? I think it's... Is it 1-0 or is it 2-0? get rid of this. Chipotle? It is. It is. I get a big chicken salad. A chomp on it. New worlds? I mean, I get to learn so many new things. Gotta prepare for the next throw. Okay. So I'm expecting a Genesis Ultimatum to just slam down. I hope to Jawari it. Ranger 14 sneaks in near the end of our stream at 548 even and says, Hey, Day 9, 
When I was deployed a few years ago, I downloaded an entire year of daily episodes from your SC2 days and watched each one. Bye. Watch one each day to help make the days pass. Time to hit you back with the thank you. Man, 20 gifted subs, Ranger. Thank you, thank you. And man, I'm so happy to hear that. I, um... Sure. Bye. I'll do better tomorrow. And Ranger! Ranger gives a second bout of 20. Oh my god! And you know, Ranger, I'm, I'm real happy. Here that while deployed, our little channel is able to be helpful. We actually used to have a hard drive that would come back to us every nine months or so. We just have a hard drive floating around the, uh, in Afghanistan, the Middle East. We just send it out to various military deployments, and they'd download the dailies, send the hard drive back. They use more frequent than every nine months. They'd send it back. We'd load up more stuff. It's really nice. We want some of our, our Mondo Bombos. Oh, that's a good, good uh, time as any to throw down the counters. I'd like to know that this is the situation. I'm going to sick with this. I think that's going to be the better play. I'm going to hold this back. I don't think this is the right time to play this card. This negate is for the Genesis Ultimatum. Dylan knows I've got it, so. Yeah, this is where Nico Aris seems like they'd be superb. Because you just, like, you know. Unless that's exactly a bone crusher. Could be. Alright, now the disdainful stroke has changed. Responsibility with this. It is actually a. Uh... It's going to be just there for the Giants. I think this is how we win now, is with Marius Call. I think this is just the right time to play this. I gotta say, again and again, I just, I'm like, thinking about Dream Trawler, and I'm like, I don't know, man. I, I do not know. I do not know. Is, is Obosh a Prey Piercer? Is this a guy? No, it's a Hellion Horror. Hellion Horror. Cultivate. Feeling great. Excuse me. Let's see, because we know that a brazen bar was going to be coming down eventually. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. So let's let's do this. We have eight damage coming in the air. So this is the one that we really want to counter. 
Ooh, I messed up because we can't. Because this this comes down first. That's okay. We 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 can still counter this one. He says, I expect Tibalt's Trickery to be banned in the next week. It's so brutally unfun to play against. <laughs> ah, damn. I think it's better not to um, do this. I need to do this. Canadian Bane says, I've been uh, considering building an Azorius or Jeskai control deck, and I was wondering how good Doomscar feels compared to other rats if you played with it. Uh, well, I actually think Doomscar leaves you really vulnerable on turn three and four, more so than um, what I felt with other decks. Specifically, I kind of feel like. Um, I feel like Sicred is absolutely essential. I mean, th this this shores up all the problems that I have with Doom Scar's weirdness. Gotcha. TPS says, "Wait, how does Doom Scar leave you more vulnerable on turn three? We can actually play it on turn three as opposed to other board wipes." So, I know that that sounds counterintuitive, because I mean, the, the intuition is it literally helps on turn three, right? Um, let, me, let me see if I can phrase this properly. You're doing so much planning to foretell on turn two... You're doing a, a substantial amount of foretelling on turn two. And it's easy to try to get your Doom Scar to do too much. Like in traditional control decks, you would say, okay, well, if turn four is my sweeper, I need to be able to do something on turn two. Like, for instance, take right now. If I had exactly Doomscar, I could kill some stuff off. It just feels like it's easy to avoid doing... Um, avoid having some of your two and three mana removal cards that you would normally have in a control deck. So it's not really that Doomscar leaves you vulnerable on turn three as much as it is you're still very vulnerable on turns two and three. We proceed here, huh? This guy's a real ruiner, huh? <laughs> Time to take a fucking beating. We can either negate Disdainful Stroke or Saw It Coming, whatever's here. We can Nico defies destiny to gain some life. Yeah. Okay, red. Okay. Okay. 
taken seven, seven damage from heaven. I need an untapped lander. Ow. So I think I need to permit my opponent to draw cards if I want to have a hope. To live. luck to me. I think, I mean, I think we're dead. And I think this was uh, just not hitting the land issue. Yeah, this Nico Defies Destiny I think is just literally not good. Bone Crusher to the teeth. Here it comes. Kapow. Oh. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Death. Yeah, this this Nico defies destiny. I think I think it's not I think it's not good. I think I'm not 100 percent on this, but I I think it's bad. So I'm actually just gonna fully cut it. At no point when I've been running that card have I ever just been like, yeah, fuck yeah. Uh, and so let's let's take a look at what some of our fortelleries have been. We actually have all the good foretell cards. I mean, we might even smash down another Starnheim Unleashed. Seems good. What? What card? Elspeth conquers death. Hmm. Eh. Banishing light is just not actually a very good card. You know, I think Siege Rabbit, I think you're actually spot on. I'm going to put in just a pair of Brazen Borrowers, right? Just continue to overload the two-drop slot. And I think... I think that sounds right. I think Borrower... I mean, Borrower has a built-in synergy with uh, Nico Iris, and it's flash speed. Look at me, I'm going first. I think inventory would only do some four of. Uh, it only really feels good if I'm doing a lot of graveyard stuff. one back. I think that that's actually the mistake. I put this in here, but I think I needed to do this, because I had the ability to cast Saw It Coming hard at the end of the last turn. So what do we actually think is coming? 
You know, I think this is the better choice. I think this is it. Another discard spell, and I think it's time to say goodbye to Sacred. Sacred's very, very good. Playing Arakdos discard. I've been seeing a lot of people try Elder Fang Disciple. I'm not 100% convinced. It's so good. Big Mike's has just hit Mythic. Love the start of the format. Well, tell us a little bit about what you hit it with. Hopefully, Tybalt's trickery combo. is actually worth it. If another Rankle comes down, I want to Sicrit the Rankle to pick off the Elder Fang. Like Mike says, basically she took my Gruul deck from last set, substituted in the fun stuff from the new set, like Arnie slays the troll. Oh yeah. What is the Brazen Nico synergy? Um, Nico's plus one says that I can return one of my creatures back to my hand. I don't know. Well, it appears that my play here is relatively straightforward. Alright, well, this is gonna be a little tricky. I really don't care about your plans. This is about the as good as we can do it. The or er, release the brazen borrower. You think too much. This is a good counter to that. We're gonna let this result, right? more powerful than I thought. Destiny won't determine my future. I can see more clearly now. I did it at this point in time because I really want the Dream Trawler to be hexproof. Like, very badly. Look. I wanted the Dream Crawler to be Hexproof. Um, and if I did it, if I waited, my opponent just would have swung more than forced to do stuff with it anyways. Back to practice. Rankle's getting sacked here, huh? So by doing it in this order... Um, helps put me in a situation where at least I can 
maximize the probability loss. of. We have to do this now, right? Because this is six and nine and three, so that's twelve. So yeah, I gotta do this now. So this lets us live like a turn. Lady's gonna make us both disco. If she doesn't, terrific. You think too much. I don't think we get out of this one. Yeah, so that this doesn't help, because if I get this and destroy this. She deals three, and then this gets recast and deals three. Ooh, that really, that really doesn't help. I think it's exactly sacred. Okay. Okay, dokie. Okay. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. That was an interesting fight. That was an interesting little battle. just finding I, I am drawing this a lot and it is tapped a lot and I don't like it a lot. <laughs> Shit. Okay. Okay. I still feel like there's a lot of merit to what we're doing. Alright, let's do the usual. We're hunting for blue. I might replace the, ga replace the gates of Istfel with a Vantress. That seems maybe better for us. I think this is the right thing to do. I, I behold like this because I can let let stuff go for a few turns in this sort of situation. Yeah, I think Dibble's trickery should be banned. I mean, I I feel clever and hilarious for sure. Looks like Chipotle. Oh, it sure is. He says, I just want to say I just finished a Tybalt mirror match in gold and it was one of the best feelings of happiness once I saw my opponent counter their own stone coil serpent. Thanks for making this possible, Thane. I <laughs> you got it, Deity. I think we're going to get it banned, man. I, I have some... I have some faith. I'm just draw here. Ooh. A bomb. 
So I think I, I tucked the Doom Scar away. Like that. Because I think that I. Uh, what I. The reason the Brazen Borrower was like a really great suggestion is Brazen Borrower is a pain in the ass as an aggro deck. Nothing. Okay. I'm going to get rid of two of the three. And then I have Sickrids to deal with everything else, and then I can start building Starnheim Unleashed stuff. Speaker of the Heavens is what you want to remove. Really? All right. Okay. Let's get this. Let's foretell this if we get another land, which is reasonably likely. We will be getting so many angels. Nice. Super nice. Super. It's going down. I actually think, dude, Sigrid is just so good. This is insane. Look at this. Exile this one. I actually think Sigrid is, is... Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, Kabiri takedown is, is disgusting. All right. So if I play Nico and zap this, I can get one and I can take two. Great. Play Nico. X equals zero. Confirm. Minus one. Pick this off. Enter's tapped. I've got you all figured out. Exile this. Block this. Four damage. Plus one from the Luminarch Aspirant. And it's pretty it's pretty uncomfortable if you're Yo Gut Bara. Seems like a pretty uncomfortable situation. Alright, I mean it could be another Kabir takedown. <laughs> that would be very good. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness, yes. Now I actually get to keep Nico Iris alive. This is incredible. So we play this, huh? Depending on a little bit. Depending on a little bit, right? Oh, both these are coming in? Okay. For some reason, I thought this one was going in. I was like, oh, shit. This is another Kabir takedown. What a top deck it would be. But there's a reason why you run four Kabir takedowns. All right, so that's really good. 
Looks like this is getting discarded. And that is okay. But it means that we live at three. Wow, letting it. Oh, wow. Oh, we get to keep Sicred. That's incredible. Okay. Okay, what a top deck, Aru. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oof. Oof. This one coming back is a bit painful, huh? That Luris off the top was just... Uh, that is just the draw. I mean, for what it's worth, we're going to be doing shit like this. So, you know. <laughs> I fully intend to try to impose as much bullshit onto my opponent as possible. Were those doggy footsteps I heard? Oh, yeah. A little clickety-clack, my perfect princess. Also, hey, Fledgy Apple Hands, man, how are you? Oof. Hello, my name is Day9, and this is my collection of things in exile. that these angels have vigilance is going to win it for us. We actually still may lose, but still. To the Troy House's first message in chat, I was recently gifted a sub, and to me the principal reason to be subbed to your... I, I didn't need to do this. That was down with me. Damn it. Who's Ralph says, There's reason to give a sub. I mean, the reason to be subbed here. Absolutely phenomenal. Plasma Day Joy emote. Definitely proves the adage. A picture is worth a thousand words. I wish I could use that emoji everywhere in my life. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I need to do it. Is this death for me? Fuck, man. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, and you know, the mistake was what we did with our sword coming. That was a mistake we made. Breaking bars feel okay. Not incredible, but they feel okay. Actually, this is good enough. Tried 5D chess yet? Asked Fledgy Apple Hands. I was playing it earlier, and it's incredibly good, silly fun. <laughs> oh my god. How 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 does 5D chess with time travel work? God, I just needed to not uh, that that's a something that I have messed up multiple times.
Okay. I think I needed to Jawari Disruption first. I think I just need to straight up just Jawari Disruption as my first play. I mean, like, play it as a land, excuse me. Not being clear. Okay, so it's some sort of Orzhov. I mean, now, now that I've left it up, I may as well it up. Igneous Ice says, just like it says, move back in time, creates a new timeline. You play all timelines at once. So, is it that, like, I can make a move on any timeline I want? Or do I make it all on all time timelines at all points in time? Let's tuck the Doom Star away. So this is some funky ass enchantment deck. So sending a piece back in time takes takes away your piece in the current timeline, but gives the chance to location. Oh my god! Now that sounds freaking awesome. That sounds like some insane, ridiculous shit that I would love to see in action, man. Man, this new Nico Aris feels so great. I'm just like racking up draws. It's like a Narset where I get a little bit more optionality and can protect herself. Oh, it's so good. Nope. Not a chance. Oh my god, I love the new Nico Aris. Cheesy88410 says Nico is weird. You know, I, I feel a bit like the way that I understand Nico Aris is that they have an amazing pair of minus ones and then a very circumstantial um, plus. Like, very, very highly circumstantial. Which means that because you're going to be minusing, like, I can see more clearly an absolute now. lunatic. That's right. Because the only the scary thing is a four mana uh, Doom Foretold. Care that much about a brazen borrower. Ooh, essence scatters. Pretty nice. Now we've got the edge. I think Elspeth Conquers Death is the only thing I'm actually truly scared about. If the baby creature comes down, sure. Like, if Stessen Champion comes down, I don't care. I don't give a shit. You play any EDH? I've never played EDH. Voicemen says hard casting shark attack. You're damn right. Man, I am on fire. 
Shark now has indestructible. I think putting in some ominous seas with your card draw might be worth it. Um, with a deck like this, we are card drawing into answers and we have almost no win conditions. Very, very few. It's like Shark Typhoon and the Dream Trawler, and that's it. Uh, and so I want to be incredibly careful about going deeper on the win conditions when I mean frankly, if I if I land a shark and start poking, or I have sick rib, and I start poking. Like, we can win with that. Well, this is a little bit painful. Sacrifice... A non-token, non-land permanent. Well... Let's get Sacred out. So that we can sacrifice Nico Aris. And then we can sacrifice Sigrid. And that, that should be pretty good, right? We get to keep our Shark Typhoon. Someone else got sacrificed, which is fine. It's so funny. I've been so hyped all week long. And I feel like my hype is finally giving way to a little bit of just good old-fashioned, I'm tired. Dang, you got me. Imagine if we just draw a Nico Iris right now, just how ridiculously huge that draw will be. I yeah, probably want to keep the essence scatter, probably. My graveyard, no! Thanks for the trickery. It was a pleasure crushing Mono Red turn two. You have a great weekend. Chat, stay classy. <laughs> it's really oh, it's something magical. That's that's maybe one of my greatest creations of all time. Is that is that good old deck? After that Tibalt rush, everything else feels like it's moving in slow motion. You know, I I think it was Riot that had a mode called. Yeah, no, we're. Not gonna let you get that cord advantage. It was Riot that had a mode called Ultra Rapid Fire that was like their normal game League of Legends, except they um, they reduced the cooldown and cost of everything by eighty percent. So you just like smashed out a whole bunch of damage. Everyone was blowing everyone up. A lot of fun. A lot of spamming. A lot of fun. But apparently. It actually caused their uh, their player base to go down. Ain't that interesting? X equals. Oh my God! What's eight divided by two is four. Oh. 
kind of an interesting question. It's like, okay, maybe if you give players this ability to play a whole bunch of, you know, sort of clowny, silly, fun, ridiculous stuff, it can actually cause them to get a little bit of fatigue and want to, like, close this thing down. I wish I thought that was so fascinating. I don't know what the reasoning is or what the other stuff was. But I don't know. I think about that a little bit with my Tybalt's, Tybalt's Trickery deck. We just had, like, an absolute laugh-tastic insane thing. Sirius says, what are your thoughts on Unsummoned? That question, I think, is a little its a little too broad for me. Oh, buddy. Oh, oh shit, yeah. So, undo, so we do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four. Remember I was talking about Nico Iris is an amazing top decker? Look, look at this. I mean, this is ridiculous. This is just insanity. So I'm going to crack one of these so that way I can get a uh, another land. Perfect. So, um, Dai Kling will ruin us if they cast another Dance of the Mance. But I mean, outside of that, we should be good. Yeah, that's actually really good. this deck or the trickery one they're both very satisfying to me in different ways All right. oh shit I didn't mean to do this whatever I meant to play this that way I could later eat this token nice <laughs> See if this works. <laughs> they won't even know what hit them. <laughs> All right, let's activate some abilities. Twenty-six cards left in the deck. I do not like the Gates of Istvel. I think I just want to make a Vantress out of this. Uh, make a Vantress out of you. Alright, so let's keep making shards. Docked and ready to go. Now watch these next little plays. Boom! Keep this one. Exile that one. Plays, baby. Plays for days. I, I kind of like the way that Nico Aris plays, that it's just like slight edge, slight edge, slight edge, slight edge. Like, I love that kind of stuff. Now, this is some big shit. I think I should put in another Vantress. Because Vantress is going to come in tapped just as frequently. It's going to be blue, which I think I'm valuing a little more highly. I'm going to just use it more. Go 
Good one. He says, can you use a Disdainful Stroke if they foretell a 4-plus mana spell? Yes, you can, because it, um, the foretell cost is what's known as an alternative cost. So, because it's an alternate casting cost, you know, you can do it on the cheap. But that said, um, the actual cost of the spell on the stack. Have you faced rogues at all today? Yeah. So this is maybe a Rakdo stack. In name vein says, uh, the type of deck is perfectly built to take advantage of a deck like this. Um, I don't know if I fully agree with that. So sure, I fully agree with that. And the reason I don't think I fully agree with that is because we might have more counters than they do. But I think, like in terms of sideboard, I would just literally run more blue counter magic. Maybe another one of our flash first strikers. Oh, Spins Vesho. It's okay to foretell one more. And behold the multiverse, you know. So we're at seven health now. Uh-oh. Apostacles, as you mentioned earlier. A nice amount of feels. Man, that Uraban was absolutely necessary. Dude. Yes. How does this guy work again? Target point reveals a number of cards and an equal number of creatures in your party. Which is one of those cards. Cleric. So I need to reveal two. Which land do you want, my man? Oh, we sure have a lot of Doom Scars today, huh? You know, I I'm actually going to do like this. I'm going to first this, then cast this. This will send us to seven. It's fine. Eventually, Gizmods will run out of Landos. Totally fine. I think I'd like the Surprise Shark Typhoon. I think I'd like the Surprise Shark Typhoon. And then I, my, my goal is Doom Scar Saw It Coming as the little combo next. I expect land and skyclave. That's what I expect. And we don't get it. Oh, shit. Surprise. Or not. I'm surprised there was no land. The skyclave shit is just like the biggest pain in the ass card. That's fine. Skyclave shit is a real pickle for us. All 
funky god of lies. Okay. And I gotta... Wait a minute. Reveals... Okay. Well. Whatever. Okay. Reflects on your actions. It's a tricky card. Tricky, tricky card. This guy, Clave Shader, really is. I guess I really want to land here. This is just a very awkward, 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 awkward position. Is this my bear? Do I own this bear? Alright, yep, we got no creatures. Ooh, shit. I still think this is the best one. Hello. I'm do this plus some. I can get you past their defenses. I can get you past their defenses. By the way, let's just take a moment to appreciate how much Sacred would just save the shit out of us. Yeah, I have no idea what this bear is. I didn't buy a mastery pass. CBS says, sorry for being miles off top, but have you ever considered trying Outer Worlds on Mostly Walking? I think Outer Worlds is just a brilliant and incredible game. Unfortunately, I've already played it. So that, that's, that's really a duh reason. Nice. It's fine. Not the Outer Worlds. Correct. I have played both the Outer Worlds and the Outer Wilds. I've done them all. Are there any like one damage effects that are lurking around here? Don't block. Oh, wait, I fucked up. Because now this just gets cast on that and then I lose. Damn it, damn it, damn it. If I blocked it though it would just come back and then I would have had another turn. Okay, so I actually did only have one turn. All right, so let's let's do this. anything. Well, there is a single way to survive this attack. There's actually one. The only way that I can see... Let's do some damage. The only way that I can see... 
is if I Shark Typhoon into a counter spell that goes on to this guy. Damn it all! Alright, that didn't work. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> I think I needed to more aggressively counter Lurse. I think I was worried about Skyclaves. You have minus one on Nico to kill Lurse? Nah, it only does tap. Only tap, it just ah, it stings, it stings, and it stings. Let's hang on to this. Let's let's learn a little bit. It feels like there's two slots that feel like they need to be pretty good against aggro. That's... or just cards are trying to kill me fast. Not sure what that should be. Oh wait, that needed to be white. You know, part of me just wants to run, like, one Shadow of the Sky. Good. Wait, why don't I just play Nico Aris and zap this? Man, okay, I'm, 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 I'm whiffing on some stuff. What am I doing? I'm... Oh. Not this, but probably get out of that, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is actually not a lot of damage. You know, I I'm just doing this if... I, I can just wait and see what special magic does. I can just wait... Just wait. We can literally cast Saw It Coming, or we can wait and Doomscar something. We can. We have every option. I think our deck just crushes Mono Green. Sacred God Favorite is just disgusting. I can't even. Because, I mean, like, look, we, we own this entire board. You attack, I exile this. I fight this. Exile this. First strike this. I mean, it's like a thousand times better than the apparition. I'm gonna do it for zero. This is fine. Shoot this. I still have a first striker up. <laughs> I've got you all figured out. Secret is ridiculous. Like this is. Look at how crazy this is. Man, it's so weird. I've, I have. I. It, it's you know coming up on Friday night. I'll probably be going offline in 10, ten minutes. I don't believe you've done this. what I can improve now. Okay, what do we do? This 
This is actually so funny. I can't, like, do anything with this. This this will trample over. <laughs> I don't quite have enough mana to do the things that I wish to do. This is, this is the best that I can see. I'll get him for some damage. Actually, the block here is what villain should do. I let it through. Ooh, okay. Alright, we'll win. This, I mean, I gotta say, I think Nico Harris is almost like a turn 6-7 play. Sometimes a turn 3 play again. Oh, what? What do we have here? But man, 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 does Nico Harris just feel incredibly like once Nico lands and Nico's protected. I mean, it just feels, like, very, very, very over. Does Neo Aris still feel like it's going to be banned? Asks Iceman. I mean, I'm, that's probably a little too hyperbolic of me. It's fun to say during a set review and stuff. Like, very fun to say in a set review. Like, is my favorite thing to say in a set review. But it's probably not going to get banned. Fine. Putting myself a little face up here, but I really couldn't care less. <laughs> if it's like questing beast, I mean, I just have secrets, so that's like fine. This is so ins- look how many cards I get to draw. I mean, we kill people, like, really slowly, but... This is, this is wonderful. I love it. I love everything about Nico Aris. It's just- it's like what's going in this slot is what I'm not sure about. It feels like I need- It's like I just need one more thing. Zerg, let's ask about Dyson Sphere program. Yeah, I, I'm thinking of doing it on Friday. I'm not doing it on Friday. Next Friday, like a week from today. Okay, now do we want, what do we want? Think. I 
I was just, we're going to see the AoE 2 in the near future. Yes, we're going to be seeing some good old fashioned AoE 2. In March, we're going to do an Age of Empires 2 week. Uh, second week of February. Next week is the first week of February, which is when we'll be doing. Fuck. Please, no. Oh, wait, what? Rat? I am now frightened. All right. Uh, we're doing Escape from Tarkov. We're doing Escape from Tarkov. Second week of February with our friend Sakriel. Escape from Tarkov. And then um, I have a PS5 now, so maybe Sekiro. Maybe a little Sekiro at the end of February. And then in the middle of March. Please enjoy this handful of things you can interact with. EFT is brutal. Well, I'm an absolute pain piggy, Schmarmalade. Escape from Tarkov, that's a surprise. Oh. Hopefully it's not, like, too much of a surprise. Hopefully you're not, like, totally, like, blown away. Like, what the hell, Dana? If Valky got a lies, plops down, I can always sort of, like, cast Nico Iris. Jewelry Disruption has too little value here. Robert Toe 2 is going to be drawing a lot with Maze Mind Tone, which is fine. Yeah, I like, I like uh, games that have a brutal structure to them. Nice. Alright, long game. Who does it better, Rakdos Control or Azorius Control? Behold the multiverse. You know, I just suspect that this is how we turn this game around. So I'm doing this because I really want to get my untappies out of the way. We have a lot of lands in hand, so we probably don't need that. This guy's a real beater. Nico Aris is going to come down on turn 6, so I can make sure I have my counters up. This land is great. I think I should be running this in my Rakdos list. Exactly one, though. Play Nico, zap this. Expect some kind of removal to go down. The game is the game is just going very calm right now. Oh my god. I just realized a huge weakness of Nico Iris. And it's a really subtle weakness too. So I'm gonna make a statement. Alright. Statement is as follows. If I cast a Planeswalker, let's imagine you're a mono-black deck with removal, and my Planeswalker... No. My Planeswalker hits the battlefield. With the way the magic works, I cast. It's on the stack. Now, I get to respond first, and then you, my opponent, get to respond. And if you don't want to do anything, boom. It hits the ground, 
And then I have priority again, and you have priority again. Restocked and ready to go. Let's try to get land here. It's very good. So when my Planeswalker hits, I always have the ability to cast a Loyalty ability before my opponent has the ability to stop my Planeswalker. Well, when Nico Aris comes out, it says when Nico Aris enters the battlefield, create X shard tokens, boom, that enters onto the stack. And so that means that the enemy now has the ability to respond to that shit. Cosmos Elixir is very sick. So this means that, like, when I when Nicker Arrows enters, I lose priority, so my opponent can actually kill Nico Aris, which is, like, unique to Nico Aris and Nico Aris alone among Planeswalkers. Minus a few others, like maybe a Handsome Jace. Removal spell. It's very calm. It's my removal spell. Oh. Tybalt as well, right? Yeah, because I guess when it enters, you gain the emblem, and the gaining of the emblem goes on to the stack. Tails end, counter. -tails. So now, technically, Roberto 2 could kill this in response. But I think it, like, just beating for five a turn with just some basic stuff is going to be excellent. Breath. I got this. So I still think we're going to be winning this via card advantage. Roberto, too, seems to be focused heavily on card draw with Cosmos uh, Elixir, Castle Lockthwains, and the already exiled Maze Mind Tomes. So I, I think that we're. I think that we are okay. I think that we are okay. That's a waste. They've already done their job. Oh, Tybalt doesn't pass priority because it says as he enters the battlefield, not when he enters the battlefield. Nice. Good reads. I need another counter spell for the Croxa. Which very, 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 very importantly. Actually, that's, that, that works great. So this is... Alright, that's nice. I'm not actually sure if Starnheim Unleashed is good. <laughs> Shit, I mean, that's fucking terrible. Of your freedom. Wow. Jesus, that's like the only thing. Huh. You are too dangerous to roam free. Alright. Destiny won't determine my future. 
teacher. One of these will come out. I'll ditch the Doom Scar and just Brazen Borrower bounce it or something. Oh, did I not? I didn't even. <laughs> I didn't even minus Nico Iris. That's fine. I got. I mean, I drew seven ups. Wow, dude! Back to back off the top. Holy fuck, a lowly. Hole of flock. Okay, now does this? Jesus, that's close. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think our opponent meant to click the Solemn Simulacrum, but we take those. We take these wins. Absolutely we do. All this, I actually don't have an untapped white. What? Yes, succumb to chaos. Two, four, six. In the tank. Oh. Share in my pain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, just cast Ugin again. I think we're. we're in for some doom. Unutilized knowledge is Return to the essence of the multi. I think our opponent has uh, some misclick errors. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Alright, I 
wonder what this is like on mobile. Alright, greed is good. I, mean, I think you all see the play. I'm just going to shark type and try to hit them in the face. Because so we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 mana. Oh, shit. Alright. This might actually just let us get another turn, though. version is already out. Remember how I said I thought that this would be a, a savior to us later on? I think I was really right. So Villain's tapped out. And Villain's gonna be at 9, it seems. I don't even think we have cards that can interact with this. Pretty sure I'm dead. Yeah, I think I'm fucked. <laughs> now, let's see here. What are my cards that are in exile? Okay, so how am I? I actually think I don't Shark Typhoon. I think I think I dig Ghost for fire, some way to clear all this stuff out. Creation. Let's get me some cards going, because I can bounce this. By God, we're going to keep trying. Okay, okay. So we're going for, for our second Brazen Borrow, I think is the play. Second Brazen Borrower and or a Doom Scar. One time. Let's put a stop here. It's also going to have a lot of uh, counter spells. Well, that's kind of hilarious. Alright. We've loaded up. If anything, I want the second on to inversion. I mean, this is not... This is not nothing, but it doesn't necessarily change that much stuff. This this is the sort of persistent problem, also in the fact that my opponent has literally like a thousand cards in his hand. I mean, the, these are the problems I'm facing. really starting to think that second that onto inversion call that I made really early never really right at the start of this game when I was like I think onto inversion is definitely gonna be the key I'm I'm feeling like I may have been a very smart person back then this card might actually this card might actually be good in our deck 
to be honest. Play a little game. This is the problem, is that my opponent has a shark typhoon. <laughs> Fuck. Uh I mean I do have another thing, right? I have like another bouncer friend. And this one's gonna shoot me. Cosmos Elixir might be an interesting one to try out. My flames burn beyond perception. Oh shit, I didn't put a stop. Alright, let me let's take a peek here. Will it blend? Where, where is that bastard? Come on, where are you? Yeah, all right. Give me this one back. <laughs> oh, man, if I had just gotten that one sooner, like last turn, if we'd gotten both the Doom Scar and the Bouncer thing, there would be no 7-7. Seven, seven. Damn, 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 damn. Crap. I'm going to take one more peek in here. <clears throat> These little guys feel... Maybe they're good. We made a few mistakes. I don't really think I'm ever going to cast Seagate Restoration. Run two Jawaris. One, we have ECD. We don't have a lot of stuff to bring back. Um, and we don't have a lot of ways to, like, flicker it down. Like, when you have Elspeth Conquers Death and Baby Teferi, ooh, you're eating stuff like crazy. Um, yeah, we, I mean, we, we don't even have anything that we're bringing back except for a Nico Iris or our one Dream Trawler, so it doesn't seem very high value. Oh, well, I, I, I might work on this a little bit more. I might not, but I'm done. On Monday is going to be What the Deck, where it's going to be me versus Brian Kibler in a battle where the stakes couldn't possibly be lower. Me and Brian are going to be... Um, ugh. 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 I'm going to be participating in a battle of Giants versus Dragons. If you'd like to have a deck submitted, head on over to our Discord, discord.gg slash day9tv. There's a deck submissions channel with more instructions. Make a deck focused either around giants or a deck focused around dragons. Once you've submitted those, excuse me, we'll be picking our very, very favorites and having a jank battle on Monday. We're doing Monday is what the deck. Monday night, Call of the Sea and Mostly Walking. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Call Time, Call Time, Call Time. And I'm thinking Dyson Sphere Program on Friday. It is a Factorio style game on planets. Okay, I'm hanging up. I I love you. Goodbye. <laughs> Long live Tibalt's trickery. Let's actually get a band.